Hello tech wizards and digital explorers. Welcome to a journey into the core of Linux, the operating system powering over 2.3% of desktop computers globally and a staggering 96.3% of the world's top 1 million servers. I am Abhisa and today we are delving into one of the most vital components of Linux, its file systems. Imagine a world where every piece of digital information is meticulously organized, where every byte of data has its own unique place. That world exists right inside your Linux machine. So buckle up as we dive deep into the intricate maze of Linux file systems, exploring how they work, why they are important and what makes them so unique in the realm of operating systems. In the realm of Linux, file systems like ext4, xfs and btrfs aren't just names, they are sophisticated architectures that manage how billions of bytes of data are stored, accessed and organized. These systems are the unsung heroes ensuring data integrity and efficiency in a digital world. Today we will uncover how these file systems support everything from your personal blogs to the largest data centers hosting petabytes of information. We will explore inodes, journaling, mounting and more terms that might sound complex but are incredibly fascinating once you get to know them. And just a quick info for you, if you are an aspiring cybersecurity professional looking for online training and certifications from prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts to enhance your credibility, then search no more. Simply launch postgraduate program in cybersecurity from MIT University in collaboration with EC Council should be your right choice. Through this course, you will gain knowledge and work ready expertise in skills like advanced hacking concepts, network packet analysis, ethical hacking, network security and over a dozen others. And that's not all, you also get the opportunity to work on multiple projects and learn from industry experts working in top tier product and security companies and academicians from top universities. This course is designed to accommodate a diverse range of learners and this course requires just a bachelor's degree with a 50% average and no prior programming experience and one plus year of work experience is preferred. If you are passionate about making your career in this field, then make sure to check out the link in the pinned comment and description box to find a cybersecurity program that fits your experience and areas of interest. And now, Linux offers a diverse array of file systems, each tailored to specific requirements. And now, let's explore some prevalent Linux file systems. So starting with EX2. And then we have EX3, EXT4, XFS, BTRFS, ZFS, JFS, and then we have riser fs so now starting with the first one that is ext2 so ext2 extended file system 2 that is one of the linux earliest and most commonly used file systems ext2 has long been a default choice for many linux distributions it's known for its stability and suitability for small to medium sized partitions though it lacks a journaling feature which can complicate file recovery post crash now moving to the next file system that is ext3 extended file system 3 building on ext2 ext3 introduces journaling to track file system changes reducing data loss risk after crashes it's a popular choice for its stability reliability and performance and now moving to the next that is ext4 extended file system 4 as the evolution of ext3 ext4 addresses some of its predecessors limitations it supports larger files quicker file system checks and enhanced performance for larger disk. Features like journal checksumming also enhances data integrity. ext4 is a default file system in many modern Linux distributions. Now moving to the next file system that is XFS. So XFS that is X file system that is designed for large scale storage and XFS excels in performance and is suitable for file systems up to 16 exabytes. It's a top choice for large data centers offering scalability, reliability and featuring like journaling and file level languages. Now moving on to the next file system that is BTRFS, B3 file system, a newer Linux file system. BTRFS supports copy on write, snapshots and sub volumes allowing for multiple file systems within a single partition. It also includes RAID and compression support. BTRFS is still under development and isn't as commonly used as other file systems. Next we have is ZFS. ZFS, Zettabyte File System. Initially developed for Solaris, ZFS is a robust system with features like snapshots, data compression, deduplication, and built-in RAID. Renowned for its data integrity and self-healing capabilities, ZFS is not typically included in Linux distributions due to licensing but can be installed separately. Now moving to the next file system that is GFS. GFS, Journal File System. 
that is developed by IBM, GFS is known for its performance and reliability. It offers journaling, file level compression, and online resizing, making it a strong choice for high performance systems. And now the next one that is Resizer FS. So targeted at high performance computing, Resizer FS includes features like journaling, file level encryption, and support for larger files. While known for its speed and reliability, it's less common compared to other file systems listed here. Now moving to key Linux file system directories. So the Linux operating system's file management is predominantly handled through directories, commonly known as folders. These elements are crucial in the Linux file system, serving not just as file holders, but also as organizational tools. Imagine directories as virtual boxes, each capable of storing files and other directories. Directories in Linux play a vital role in providing an ordered hierarchical framework for file arrangement. This hierarchy commences at the root directory denoted as slash and extends into various subdirectories. This approach allows for a logical and systematic organization of complex systems, enhancing the ease of file management and access. So key Linux file system directories, each directory in the Linux file system serves a distinct purpose. Here are some of the significant directories, starting with the number one that is root directory. So root directory is the highest level in the Linux file system hierarchy. All other directories and files are nested within this root. Now moving to the next directory that is bin. Standing for binaries, this directory contains essential command line utilities and programs vital for basic system management. And then we have boot. So here lies the bootloader files and the kernel images necessary for system startup. And then we have dev. This directory hosts device files representing both physical like printers and disk and virtual devices like terminals. And then we have etc directory that is home to system configuration files. These are utilized by various applications and services. And then we have home directory. It houses individual users directories providing personal space for file and setting storage. And then we have library directory. This directory stores shared library files needed by system programs. Next we have media directory, a mounting point for removable media such as USB drives, CDs and DVDs. And then we have MNT that is mounting directory that is used for temporarily mounting file systems like network file systems or disk images. Next we have OPD directory, a location for additional software packages that are not part of the standard system. And then we have standard bin directory, a directory for system binaries and administrative tools essential for system upkeep. And then we have user directory that contains user level programs, libraries, documentation and shared data files. So these were the directories in Linux file distribution system. And now here are the key concepts in file systems. Starting with journaling file system. So these systems maintain a log referred to as journal. This log records changes to files that are not yet permanently saved on the disk. This feature is particularly useful for recovering loss changes in the event of a system failure. And the next we have is versioning file systems. These systems preserve earlier versions of files. Essentially, they save file copies based on their previous states at specific intervals, offering a backup mechanism that could be based on minute or hourly updates. And next we have index nodes. An inode symbolizes a file or directory detailing attributes like size, permissions, ownership, and physical locations. And now we'll see the demo for the Linux file distribution system. So for that, we'll open the terminal with Control Alt T. And now First we'll see in which directory we currently are in. So we are in home Abhisaraja. So first we'll move to the root directory. For that we'll write the command cd space slash. So now we have moved to the root directory. And here we'll see what types of directories we have. We have bin, dev, boot, etc, opt, run, swap file. So now we'll move to the bin directory. So in bin directory, it contains binaries or essential executable files. So these are the binaries and executable files that we can use in the terminal only. So now, as I will show you, 
there's a bin and there's s bin also this is s bin so now we'll move to the s bin directory for that we'll write the command cd s bin and here we see the directories of s bin so what does s bin contain it contains system binaries like mount or delete and the user that are used by the root user so these binaries can be used by the root user only and then we have other directories that is library so to move to the library directory we'll write the command cdlib and now we'll see its directories so what does it contains it stores common libraries between bin and s bin so many directories are stored in the library directory only so then we have another directory that is user directory under the root only so to move to that we'll write cd user so it says that so first we'll move back to the root directory and then we'll move to the user directory so it says that no such file or directory is present here we'll just check i think it's usr for user yeah it's usr so user directory is named as usr we'll move to the user directory and to see the directories inside user so these are the directories in user so user has its own bin and s bin directory and the binaries here are non essential binaries and there's a local directory under user so it contains binaries that you can combine manually so these are all the directories under root and you can go to other directories also as i have shown you the diagram of all the directories under user or under the root that i have shown in the previous thing so you can check it out so in conclusion the linux file system with its directory structure is a cornerstone of the operating system it facilitates efficient data management while upholding system stability and security linux file system is characterized by its hierarchical tree like structure with the root directory at its apex various file systems in linux cater to different needs each with its pros and cons the linux directory structure encompasses an array of directories each designated for specific function like system binaries boot files device files and user files and with that we have come to the end of this tutorial hope you guys found it informative and helpful till then stay safe and keep learning Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.